Oh, we can always eat at the pub. Oh, yeah, the pub last night. Look, if you give me some money, I'll do the shopping at lunchtime. Fine. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not going to get me very far. Use your key card. I uh, went through the washing machine, got a bit chewed up. Cash a check. Well, if I do that, then I'll have to queue at the bank and I won't have time to do the shopping. What do we got, mate? Uh, we've got two cars reported stolen, as well as a white high ace fan, which belongs to a bloke in the rag trade. He's got a couple of racks of clothing in that one. Some detonators have been pinched from the uh, quarry. Maggie's gone over there to sort that one out. And a self-reported accident just out of town. Good night. I'll get to the bank if I can before lunch. OK, thanks. Morning. Morning, boss. Aren't you due out on patrol? You're going now. Can you bring your shorthand, Pat? Mount Thomas 608 to base. Base to 608. Yeah, I found the van. Has it been empty down? It doesn't look like it. There's a lot of stuff inside. Well, give me a location and I'll get the bloke to come and pick it up. But the clothing looks intact. How long is this guy going to be? Oh, the guy's not answering his calls. It seems a bit dodgy to leave it here. Can you get it started? Have a look. Thanks very much. See you. Yeah, uh, Maggie's hanging around, not doing too much. We'll be out in a sec. PJ, there's yep. been a call about a safe breaking at the Green Street News Agency. Can you handle it? I've got to pick up Wayne's car, and then I've got to give a talk at primary school. Oh, safe breaking. Haven't had one of those for a while. Takes a bit of art to break a safe. Oh, we'll take your word for that, PJ. What are you going to talk about? Safely. Yeah, you'd think we'd be looking for a bunch of well-dressed car thieves. Ta, I'll see you back there. Go on, out. How are you? They didn't break into the safe. They took the bloody thing, lock, stock and barrel. Uh, that's a bit crude. There's a few other words I could use for it. How big was the safe? About a metre each way. Yeah, about that. Any idea what it would weigh? It took two men with a truck to deliver it. So they didn't carry it out under their arm. What was in it? Checks, you know, for the newspaper deliveries. I can get those cancelled. Well, they wouldn't present checks unless they were stupid. Uh, what else? Cash. About three and a half grand. Some personal papers. I can replace some of that. But you know, there's stuff I can't replace. Family records, my dad's medals. Oh, you don't have an alarm? Well, I had the safe, didn't I? The van's parked outside. Well, I've gone to the owner. I told him the good news. Well, he's here now. He's out there checking it out. Hello. Money for the shopping. Oh, well done. Mm -hmm. There's a shopping list on my desk. You want to add anything? Can I help you, sir? George Pearson. Oh, how'd you go, mate? I mean, apart from the lock, was it all right? We just assumed because they didn't touch the clothes, they were just joyriders. They did touch the clothes. There's two leather coats gone missing from the racks. Is that all? Oh, I paid nearly 300 each for them. One man's, one lady's. They're worth nearly six retail. Well, they insured? Well, not in transit. 
I can't afford the insurance on top of everything else. Well, it might have been wise in retrospect, sir. What, meaning I won't get them back? Well, we'll do our best. Wayne, do you want to come over here and take over? Get some details? Yeah, well, I picked up the clothes in Flinders Lane and paid for them. Most of the leather coats were on order, being expensive items. Oh, well, what'd you do then? I drove back here. You didn't stop anywhere on the way? It was dark by the time I got here. I didn't feel like unloading till I'd had something to eat. I put the van in the yard and had a quick meal at the pub. How long were you gone? 20 minutes, half an hour. The van was locked, it was in the yard. Should have been safe enough. Hey. Well, from the time you reported it stolen to the time I found it this morning, that's about 12 hours. It's plenty of time for two coats to go missing. Where did you find it? Uh, cool Long Street, just near the intersection of Park. Maybe someone along there noticed something. Yeah, we'll be talking to them. Yeah, when? During the course of the day, sir. In two coats doesn't sound like much, but we're talking nearly a thousand bucks. Oh, we appreciate that. Well, well, uh, that's for fingerprints. Now, if they went to all that trouble to get the safe out, you think they'd take a few precautions. What do you reckon they'd do with it? After they got it open, yeah. dump it. Like where? Like anywhere. Bush track tip, possibly the river. The uh, chances are you'll get your safe back. Right. We'll need a list of everyone who works for you. Somebody knew that safe was there and no alarm. They could have watched the shop and come in as a customer. Uh, it still doesn't give them access to the back room. And they didn't blow the safe on the premises, which they might have done just as easily. No, oh, these guys came prepared. You make them sound like a troop of Boy Scouts. Good place to start. I'll bring the lists over. So, uh, this is everyone who works for you? Mm-hmm. Oh, plus a few who used to. Yeah. This guy, his name rings a bell. What's he do for you? He's a paper boy. Right. His name rings a bell. Well, he's only 14. Sit down. I'm kind of thinking of it being his early 20s. Been in and out of detention homes. But he's not your straight critic. He's into stunts. You'd call this a bit of a stunt, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. A real stunt. Can I help you, sir? I want to see your superior officer. Are you sure? I'll just get in for you. Hold on. Boss, someone to see you. The constable went to the back of the van a couple of times. Now, the first time I had the distinct impression that he looked around furtively and was carrying something in his hands. Look, I don't want a big production over this. I just want the two coats back. Are you alleging the constable took the coats? Well, I'm just saying I had the distinct impression that he did. You know, it's a very serious allegation. Look, I just want the coats back, OK? Look, either you're making the allegation against the constable or you're not. OK, then. I'm making the allegation. If you uh, come this way, sir, we'll take a statement. Oh, thank you very much. And not you, sir. We'll be in touch. Nick, show Mr Pearson out. What about my coats? When do I get them back? We'll let you know in due course. Did you see the constable reach into the van? Yeah, I saw him reach into the van, he handled the clothes and then he turned his back to me. So when was the first time you thought that he had uh, something in his hands? When he turned his back to me. Did he close the doors to the van? I don't think so. No, 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 no. Then what did he do? Then he looked around furtively. Why do you say furtively? Well, that's how it looked. Then what? Well, then he walked back to the police car. Did you see him put anything inside the police car? It was partly obscured. Partly obscured. Well, I'd seen the clothes and the coats in the back of the van, see? And the van, it was parked at a funny angle, you know, like it'd been dumped. Well, I was just about to ring up and the police car turned up. Did you go close to the van? Well, walked around Did it. you count the coats? Oh, no reason to. So you don't know how many coats were in the van when you first saw it, right? Uh -huh. Let me ask you this question very seriously, Mr McCann. How much did you really see? I saw enough. But you can't definitely state that you ever saw the constable holding those two coats. I saw enough to be reasonably sure. But not beyond reasonable doubt. Well, I'll tell you what's not beyond reasonable doubt. <laughs> this will be a cover-up. 
We all know it happens, you know. One for him, one for the girlfriend. Probably thought nothing of it. The constable is married, sir. Well, his wife, then. What's the difference? You need to sign a statement. If this goes further, you'll be required to give evidence. In court? If this goes further, the internal investigation department would handle it. They'd decide what action was appropriate. Well, yeah, I'll give evidence. Hi. Hi. Constable! Where are you going? Just to make some inquiries along the street where that van was parked. We'll leave that for now. Stay here. Constable Doyle. Yes, there were coats on the rack. Vinyl or leather, I didn't really look too closely. Did you count them? No, I was just there to pick up Wayne's car. Do you know what time you went out? Well, I left here about 9.20 and I was back by 9.40. I had to be at the school by 10. There's nothing else you remember? Nothing out of the ordinary? No. Did Constable Patterson say anything to you? We just talked about how lucky this bloke was to get all his stuff back, that's all. You opened up the back of the van? Yeah. Why? Well, no particular reason. I just intended to leave the vehicle secure for the owner to come and pick it up. The driver's side lock was broken, so I thought I'd better check the back, too. I have to ask you this. Did you carry anything away from the back of the van? No. Nothing. Why? Is that guy saying I stole those coats? The evidence is uncertain on that point. And what is this all about? It's about a complaint that's been laid, which therefore has to be investigated. Well, what am I supposed to do with a couple of leather coats anyway? Turn up poncing around the pub in them? Did you count the coats when you opened up the back of the van? No, there's heaps of stuff back there. I had no reason to count any of it. But you saw them? Yeah, they're on the end, I think, nearest the door. And you drove the van straight back to the station? You didn't stop off anywhere? No, I drove straight back. I have to confine you to duties at the station. What? While further investigations take place. You do understand that this is what I have to do, regardless of any private opinion I might have in the matter? Yeah, thanks, Mr McCann. Uh, straight through, we'll be in touch. I hope so. Thank you, sir. Being a little dead shit. He hasn't got anything on Wayne, has he? He couldn't have. Mags, he's the type who thinks he's got something on everyone. Loves opening up people's cupboards and hopes a skeleton will fall out. But I mean, Wayne, there is no way. Can't the boss stop it dead? I don't know. I've got to go out. Tell the boss I'm chasing up that missing safe. Sure. See you. Maggie, can you get this for me? Yeah. Wayne, is something wrong? Darling. Heavy lifting lately. Lifting? Lifting what? Large metal object. Take a seat, Aaron. Why don't you listen? Right there, man. I wasn't in town last night. I was over in St. David's. I've got an alibi. Uh, I bet you have. I just asked the people I was with. All mates of yours, right? And what are they going to say? Well, they're going to tell you where I was. <laughs> yeah, but am I going to believe them? You've still got to prove I wasn't in St. David's. Shane told you about the safe, didn't he? 
What safe? Yeah, he's even seen it opened up, seen the cash inside. You know, you got a safe like that, uh, get a little lazy about the banking, let it accumulate a bit. I've told you before. Right. You got that alibi? Yeah. Then why do I get this funny feeling that you were at the news agents last night? That's the way he says it, the alibi. Records I've sussed him, he's kind of enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah. Two more, please, Chris. Yeah, he's a smart ass. Likes the feeling of a bit of danger. Like I said, he's into stunts. That's it? Yeah. So far, we've got negative fingerprints, nothing left of the site, nothing to indicate the vehicle used. All we've got is his little brother's name on the list. I know this guy's not straight on this. PJ? Yep. Yeah. Wanna get Wayne a beer? Yeah, hang on. About Wayne. Yeah. Well, it's a gap of about 15 minutes between the time Maggie arrived back to the station with his car and Wayne arrived back with a van. And he told me that he drove straight back. Oh, you asked him about it? It's getting to the point where I better leave things to the IID. There's been a complaint laid. If we don't take it further, McCann certainly will. And for an old bloody station. Do you know it's bullshit, Yeah, don't of course you? I do. Let's go home. Uh, there's nothing to eat. I didn't get around to doing the shopping. I don't care. Let's go. I guess we could order a pizza. Come on. I mean, why don't they just tell the old sod to get lost? They can't. Get him in. Give him the one-two treatment. Break down his story and then charge him with something. They would do it if they wanted to. No, they can't. <sighs> what would we do with two stolen leather coats? Wear them round town? Well, that's what I said to them. <sighs> so stupid. Can't you just go and see this guy and talk to him? Oh, no, that's the one thing I cannot do. Well, what happens? I mean, really, what happens now? Now, you confirm, Constable, that you saw some leather coats on a rack in the back of the vehicle. Yes, sir. But you don't know how many there were when you saw them? No, I don't, sir. And do you state that you did not take any of the coats? I state that I did not take the coats. And that you did not handle them in any way? No, sir. We've got a warrant here to search your house. It'll be fine, sir. And you understand that you'll continue to be restricted to watch housekeeper's duties until the investigation is completed? Yes, sir. Good. We'll get on with it then. There's a trapdoor in the ceiling of the bathroom. You can get into the roof that way. I uh, doubt if that'll be necessary, ma'am. Why not? I mean, if we're going to steal something, wouldn't we take the trouble to hide it? You don't really think that we leave them hanging in the wardrobe, do you? Uh, you can get right through under the floor as well. What about the oven? We could have buried them in the back garden, I suppose. I mean, you'll do anything if you're an addict. Come again? Addicted to leather coats. You'll do anything to get your fix, won't you? I know for a fact I wasn't there when I did a pest inspection about 10 days ago. Right, so uh, it was a big safe. Yeah, quite big. Struck me as funny the way it's been dumped there on its back. It looks like someone's had a go trying to open it. And you said the owners were away? In Queensland. Oh, Gone for another week or so. Any contact number for them? Uh, yeah, I think I can help you out there. Had any pocket in the top pocket right there. All right. Okay. Now, you saw the constable open the back of the van. Yes. Yes, then he turned his back to me, walked towards the police car. That's when I knew he had something in his hands. 
You're quite sure of that, are you? Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought about it. Something light, but with a bit of bulk to it, you know. But you didn't actually see the coats in his hands. No, you see, he had his back to me. Yeah? Well, it's suspicious in itself, isn't it? The officer states he had nothing in his hands. No, he would, wouldn't he? What did he do with this object or objects? Well, he took them to the police car. Well, did he put them in the boot or, or the body of the vehicle? No, in the body of the vehicle. You saw him put it in the body of the vehicle? Well, no. No, it was partly obscured by the van. How much of it was obscured? Well, I, I could see the tail of the police car and the roof. So how could you tell what he did with it? Well, I, I could see his head, you see, over the roof of the van. And uh, what happened then? Well, then the second police car arrived and the policewoman got into the, the first police car. Then the first constable went to the van and did something to it. I'll hot wired it, I think the term is. I presume he's been instructed by thieves. Don't presume anything, please. Well, then he followed the other police car. So by this stage, in your account of it, the coats you're alleging were stolen were in the police car, driven by the police woman. Yeah, well, it makes sense, doesn't it? I mean, one for him, one for her is a sort of a payoff, you know? Are you now making allegations against Constable Doyle? Well, that's logical, isn't it? It's bloody-minded guesswork. You're making allegations against two of my best officers. Doesn't say much for the station here, does Sergeant. it? Sergeant. Mr McCann. Did you see anything at all that might implicate the other constable? No. That's it. Well, it doesn't look like they've opened it. They've tried. Well, what, what are you doing? I'm going to open it up, get everything out. No, don't touch anything, all right? Look, the guy I've got my eye on lives around the corner. Now, since he hasn't got it opened, he'll come back for it. Well, that's what's worrying me. There's the cash and the medals and everything. He comes back, I'll nail it. Well, let me get my stuff out and close it up again. And then you can do what you like. No. Could be fingerprints. It's my property. What's to stop me getting a truck and a few blokes and picking it up? There's been a felony, Carol. The safe's now an exhibit. You did that, you'd be committing an offence. Committing an offence? By taking back what's mine? It's the law. And it should be further noted that while the new batteries do hold a charge, they are, in our experience at this station, less satisfactory. Rose? Oh, I'm um, sorry I lost you. Wayne? Can't someone stop it? Can't you? I promise you I would if I could. Uh, further to be noted. That while the new batteries do hold a charge, they are, in our experience at this station, still less satisfactory than the older style batteries. Yep. Look, Wayne, no one here believes you took those coats, no matter what any nosy little bastard says to the contrary. Well, tell that to the IID. Anything like this ever happened to you? No. Not personally. A mate of mine was in a station with a petty cash went missing. Yeah. Well, I couldn't prove who did it. So they counselled all the officers and they transferred them all. They transferred them? <laughs> well, they didn't even prove it. Look, don't take this as gospel, all right, mate. But as I understand it, sometimes these things aren't proved. See, it's not like a jury trial or a court case. If it were, you might be better off. There you go. It's a police service for you. Meaning if I'm accused, I'm guilty. I don't believe this. That van was stolen. Those jackets were in the possession of the thieves for 12 hours. And then the van was abandoned where any passing kid could have taken the coats. Yeah, it's all right. And the IRD blokes might go up to McGann and they'll tell him to blow his evidence out his ear. But you don't reckon they will? Why well, not? I don't know. I don't know. Who are they? They? Oh, heavies. Do you want to happen, Chris? What? There's a dozen or so leather coats gone missing from a van the cops had in custody. George Pearson's van. Flog them down in Melbourne, you make a few grand. Valuable they were. The witness said you looked around furtively before you left the back of the van. Now, can you explain that? Yeah, well, my vehicle was parked on the opposite side of the street. I'm sure I checked for traffic before I crossed back. When you were at the back of the van, did you handle the coats in any way? No. And you state that you had nothing in your hands when you went to or left the back of the vehicle on either occasion? Nothing at all. I mean, I could say to you I had my hat in my hands, and that's what he thinks he saw, but I'm not even saying that. I'm saying I had we nothing. We are not talking about 
what you could say. I just meant that I could have... Why are they taking so long? Well, I've got to cover it from every possible angle, Rob. Why? Why do they have to? Why don't they just look at his record and take his word for it? I mean, he got shot for the sake of the police force. Why don't they consider that? Roz, they probably will take that into account. They'll look at everything. They haven't so far. So far, they've just treated him like a criminal. Wayne told me that you said that they could transfer him. Well, it's a possibility. Nick? Well, it is. Even though he's done nothing wrong, they could still transfer him? Yes, Carol. Yes, I am aware of what's in the safe, but we also have a responsibility to apprehend the offenders if we can. Look, if they haven't opened it while it's under surveillance, I think we can rest assured that the contents are perfectly safe. Yes, yes, that's the decision and I'm backing it. All right, we'll be in touch in the morning. Thanks, Carol. Good one. We'd save ourselves a lot of grief if we just fingerprinted the bloody thing and let her get her stuff out. Ah, too much activity. Look, Aaron lives around the corner. If he sees anything that makes him suspicious, he won't come back for it. Look, I need to put an overnight watch on the safe. I've been in touch with the owners and they've okayed us using the house. Well, it's a bit tricky. Wayne can't go out on duty and you can't have Maggie or Nick. Oh, I can handle it on my own. My bet is Aaron and a mate of his will take a truck through the driveway about 3 a.m. One night, okay? I might take a couple. I mean, since the owners aren't there, Aaron might think there's no rush. We've got too much else on. Give it one night. I don't. Oh, uh, how's it going with Wayne? I don't know yet. Candace full of crap. I mean, he's got this vague impression of something because he was out looking for it. Even he says he didn't see anything. He's a classic unreliable witness. Maybe. But Wayne still still count for that missing 15 minutes. I just hope he's not stupid enough to lie to the IID like he did to me. Did you drive the van straight back to the station by the shortest route? No. What did you do? I went via Main Street. I stopped at an instant teller. For how long did you stop? Um, there was one person in front of me, four or five minutes, maybe. Why did you stop there? My wife needed money to do the shopping. Did you tell Sergeant Croydon this? No. Why not? He would have said I shouldn't have done it. Do you think you should have done it? No. You were on duty, driving a stolen vehicle with a broken lock, and you stopped off on personal business. Yes, sir. Thank you, Constable. Now, you'll remain on duty within the station only, yes? Yes, sir. Good. I don't know. You mean they've been grilling you for this long and you still don't know what happened? Well, they didn't tell me anything. These IID blokes don't expect to answer questions, love. They expect to ask them. No. We didn't find anything conclusive. No. But it is unlikely the constable will keep the coats in his house once the allegation had been made. It's even more unlikely that he would have touched them in the first place. Constable Patterson is a very good officer. Even good officers can succumb to a moment's temptation. Well, I don't believe it in this case. No? No. Well, the only evidence we have is from the one witness, and that's confusing. <laughs> to say the least. The only thing we really have against the officer is the missing 12 to 15 minutes, during which time the officer claimed he stopped off at the bank. But according to McCann's evidence, the coach would have already been in the police car driven by Constable Doyle. That's correct. But although it doesn't seem to have any bearing on McCann's evidence, it does discredit the officer, since he claimed to have driven straight back. He's in trouble with me as his sergeant for doing it, but that's as far as it should go. We'll put it in our report, and then there'll be a decision made on whether any further action is taken or not. Ten minutes to closing. Like yeah, nice night. I've been telling them that Gray McCann's an old goat. He wouldn't know what he saw. 
Thanks. Now, I'm really glad you did all that shopping today. It'll come in handy when I get dismissed from the force. You won't get dismissed. No, but I'll have a nice big black mark in front of my name. Wherever I go from now on, there'll be this nice big black mark. The guy that got transferred from Mount Thomas on suspicion of theft. I wasn't to know that you'd stop off at the bank if you weren't supposed to. You made such a big production out of it. You always do. Everything's such a big production. Don't pin this on me, Wayne. I wasn't to know. Well, neither was I when I stopped for that van. I should have just radioed Nick and driven on by. It's getting late. So? What have I got to do tomorrow except hang out in the station? Come to bed, please, Wayne. No, I've got to figure out what to do about this. Okay, what's that? I don't know, but I'm not going to wear it. Well, what can you do? I'm not going to wear it. Come on, let's talk about it in the morning. Come on. So, that's the story, is it? Apparently. <clears throat> yeah, uh, sorry about that. Well, I'm going to lodge a complaint. I'm going to call up St David's and talk to the inspector. Well, it's your right to do that, Carol. I'll say it's my right. And I've been hearing some funny stories around town about you blokes. Some fur coats or something. What? Well, coats anyway. Something else that went missing while in so-called custody. Carol, you lodge your complaint, but let me counsel you very seriously not to make allegations about a matter you know absolutely nothing about. I know about my safe, boy -o. We had her safe, unopened, in custody, and we lost it again. What kind of fools are we going to look? Look, I'll go around and see you later. I'll get a detailed description as what was in. What good's that going to do? Look, this Aaron is a smart ass. He'll try and cash the check, sell the medals. He'll stuff up somehow. Yeah, like you did last night. I dozed off for 15 minutes tops. He knew you were there. Maybe. Obviously he knew. I can still nail him. PJ, you do what you like. I just prefer you to do it out of my sight for quite some time. Boss, you got a minute? Come on. I just think you ought to know that I'm not prepared to accept a transfer. What do you intend to do about it? If it comes down to it, I intend to quit the force. Ros and I have already talked about it. Well, if you want to know what I think, I think you're both jumping the gun. I'm not prepared to have this thing follow me around for the rest of my life. We don't know yet that it will. It'll go on my record. The report isn't in yet. It's what people think. It's what they think all over town. Someone said something to Ros in the local shop. Do either of you care what people think in the local shop? And in the pub? And what people think in the pub is enough to make you throw in a promising career? Go on the dole queue? Where? Here? Back in the city? Not here. Well, the dole queue's pretty much the same all over. I'd get a job. Oh, yeah, I agree. You'd get another job. But you wouldn't be able to pick and choose. And in six months, you'd be wondering why you let a nosy fool who needs glasses run you out of town. Stay put, Wayne. Wait it out. Let's see what the report says. Yeah, but if it goes bad... OK, then we'll talk about it. In the meantime, my advice is to go over to the pub and face those bastards down. Don't crawl away. Uh, excuse me, boss. There's been an explosion at the quarry. Report of injuries. Yeah, uh, get Nick and PJ to go. Sit tight. Wait it out. I'm not accepting any resignations until that report's in. Oh. What do we have here? 
Yeah, right. We stuck some jelly to the side of it. What? Railway detonator? Blew it right up in the air and it still didn't open. Even made itself a little crater. Yeah, tough bugger, eh? Anyhow, you can't charge us with safe breaking. We never got it open. Nah, I'm sure there's a few other things we can think of, Aaron. Who owns a truck? He does. What about this? Neil of the Cape with the label cut off. Yeah, Tar, thanks, Beck. How is he? Well, there's some bad lacerations. Might lose a sight in his left eye. Tough. Yeah, tough. So tell me about the van. We needed something big enough to carry the safe. There it was. And the clothing? I never touched it. Too hard to dispose of. Dave took a couple of leather coats. One for his girlfriend. I heard one of you blokes pinch some more. <laughs> Makes you think, doesn't it, when you can't trust your police force. All the coats are accounted for now, thanks, Aaron. Hey, Wayne. You want the pleasure of calling this bloke and telling him? No. Well, those stolen cars has just turned up. Come with me, Wayne. Since when does a boss go out to a dumped car? Since he wanted to talk to Wayne. They made a mess of that. Yeah, the bloke who owns the high ace was luckier. So, we consider the matter closed. Look, son, you've been proved in the clear, your record's clean. The rest of it doesn't matter a damn. I'm not prepared to be thought of as a bent cop. I'd rather just get out. Those people who want to think of us as bent think we're all bent. You worry about what people think you'll wind up in a padded cell. It's not worth it. You put up with a bit of nonsense and you get on with it. Wayne, you've been through a rough trot. You're bitter, that's understandable, but it will pass. Give it time, okay? Okay. Good. Get on the radio, tell Nick to inform the owner we found his pride and joy. Tell the poor bastard he better order a tow truck to come and collect it. Wayne, Things might have been a lot simpler if you'd been up front with me about going to the bank. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we'll forget about it this time. But if you ever lie to me again, you can't call me. They cut the labels out. I can't sell them without labels. Look, you got your coats back, OK? You sort out the bloody labels. I didn't accuse anybody. It was just what Graham McCann said he saw. Ah, oh, yeah, Mr McCann. Our great eyewitness. Trouble is, the eye and the memory aren't all that reliable. People convince themselves of anything in retrospect. Convince themselves of any bloody thing. You make sure he signs for those. I uh, still reckon you should get an alarm. Well, it's over. I guess we ought to go out and celebrate. No, I guess it's not the sort of thing we do celebrate. But it is over, isn't it? I guess so. I don't know. So why don't we go down to the pub and have a drink? All right, we'll stay here. You know the type. You know, I mean, if he hasn't done it this time, he's sure to do it in the future. Gee, I mean, you can tell by his face, you know. I mean, just a look on his face, you just knew that he'd been sprung guilty as hell. Been sprung. You're talking about Wayne Patterson? Yeah, friend of yours. Finish your drink and leave. Oh, come off, Chris. <laughs> I'm talking to Mr McCann, George. You can do your drinking somewhere else and don't come back again. This is ridiculous. I mean it, you're barred. Got anything to add to that, George? 
Door's over there. You coming? No. Nah. When you Chrissy. Wayne, we're going to stay here, aren't we? Hmm? I mean, you're not still thinking of leaving. Oh, no. Oh, I'm going to be watching my ass from now on. Anything looks a bit dodgy, I'm going to leave it right alone. Play it by the book. Hello? Yeah. OK. Thanks, PJ. I'll try. That was PJ. He wants us to join the others down at the pub for a drink. I think we should. I want to propose a toast to the detectives division of Mount Thomas Police. Oh, yeah, what for? For solving the mystery of the missing leather coats. Oh, get out of it. I found the case. Yeah, but mate, car. if I hadn't nailed Aaron. The only reason you got Aaron was because he has got half a brain and you got lucky. I'll drink to that. Thanks, Max. Good <laughs> job. Hey, George. You can always eat at the pub. I oh, yeah, the pub last night. If you give me some money, I'll do the shopping at lunchtime. Fine. Oh, yeah. Well, that's not going to get me very far. Use your key card. Uh, went through the washing machine, got a bit chewed up. Cash a check. Well, if I do that, then I'll have to queue at the bank and I won't have time to do the shopping. What do we got, mate? Uh, we've got two cars reported stolen, as well as a white high ice fan, which belongs to Blake in the rag trade. He's got a couple of wrecks of clothing in that one. Some detonators have been pinched from the uh, quarry. Maggie's gone over there to sort that one out. And a self-reported accident just out of town. Good night. I'll get to the bank if I can before lunch. OK, thanks. Morning. Morning, boss. Aren't you due out on patrol? You're going now. Can you bring your shorthand, Pat? Mount Thomas 608 to base. Base to 608. Yeah, I found the van. Has it been empty down? It doesn't look like it. There's a lot of stuff inside. Well, give me your location and I'll get the bloke to come and pick it up. But the clothing looks intact. How long is this guy going to be? Oh, the guy's not answering his calls. It seems a bit dodgy to leave it here. Can you get it started? Have a look. Thanks very much. See you. It goes. I'll find it again. Can someone pick up the car? Yeah, uh, Maggie's hanging around, not doing too much. We'll be out in a sec. PJ, there's yep. been a call about a safe breaking at the Green Street News Agency. Can you handle it? I've got to pick up Wayne's car, and then I've got to give a talk at the primary school. Oh, a safe breaking. Haven't had one of those for a while. Takes a bit of art to break a safe. Oh, we'll take your word for that, PJ. What are you going to talk about? Yeah, you'd think we'd be looking for a bunch of well-dressed car thieves. Ta, I'll see you back there. Go on, Oak. Oh, 
How are you? They didn't break into the safe. They took the bloody thing, lock, stock and barrel. Uh, that's a bit crude. There's a few other words I could use for it. Well, how big was the safe? About a metre each way. Yeah, about that. Any idea what it would weigh? Took two men with a truck to deliver it. So they didn't carry it out under their arm. What was in it? Checks, you know, for the newspaper deliveries. I can get those cancelled. Well, they wouldn't present checks unless they were stupid. Uh, what else? Cash. About three and a half 